good day exit strategies radio show family hey look we had an amazing show with our guest this past week eric simonson with a bundo now we have broken down gotten into talking about how you can start where you are in budgeting and becoming more financially literate and how you can start to quote unquote build and save and get to all these other things that we talk about on this show so guys we had such an amazing time guys that we had to break the show up into two parts so please stay tuned please 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 get your pen and paper and let's continue this conversation with eric today guys i'm super excited to continue with part two of our interview with eric simonson ceo of abundo let's get started so real estate i get that same thing in real estate eric unfortunately you oftentimes don't know when you reach the top of the hill until you've crossed over and realize that what's behind you is higher than what's yeah. in front of you and they say this many years or whatever there's no formula it's just historically these things have happened because in the interim these things have happened and what happens is we learn each cycle so something is different so it goes further and further there's no way to time it if you time it it's just dumb luck and coming back on the other side, as far as the herd mentality, when you talked about Airbnb, I'm seeing that. We got to learn, you, know, you do this in your travels, which we probably will get to, but you learn the house hack. You know what I'm saying? So, but people running to buy Airbnbs, and now you got the market flooded with so many Airbnbs that what happens is the occupancy rate goes down. So you bought this property as an Airbnb, but all of a sudden, 30 other people bought properties in the same area and put them up. So now you guys are competing on price and pushing it down. Mm -hmm. So you're not increasing the market. You go from occupancy at 200, 250 a night down to a hundred dollars or 150 a night, but your cost to turn the unit, you got to have somebody clean it. You got to refresh lending. You got to do the work on it, or you got to hire it out. And the more properties that you have like that, the less likely you're going to be able to do all of that every day. So if you bought it as an investment, you have a mortgage on it. If you finance, then you got the service charges and you got the work that you got to do. You could very well find yourself upside down mm -hmm. or just breaking even and putting all the sweat equity into the property. Yeah. So those strategies sometimes work, but we have to look at the bigger picture. But go ahead. I didn't want to cut you off, Eric. Yeah, I think it's totally different now than it was three, four years ago when you could buy a property uh, with a three and a half percent, three and a quarter percent interest rate. And now it's double that. And I don't know if you're going to be able to rent it out for double. If there's, like you said, if there's that more people kind of entering the market and trying to do the same thing. So the economics start to break down on that. Exactly. Exactly. So you talk about when you meet with people and all that kind of stuff, a number of different things. And I'm going to ask you this question because it's always that burning question. What do you know that other people that do what you do know, but won't tell people? <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I know that financial advisors charge a lot. There's a lot of costs involved with working with a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, historically most advisors and most people, right? They're just, it's hard to get all those costs kind of out there because they're, they're layered and they're embedded. And so I think that that's kind of a big thing that financial advisors they understand like, oh, these products probably are more expensive than maybe what's considered average, but it's just, it's hard to always align the consumer with that. And that's again, part of also part of why I am working the way I am and our firm charges the way we do charge because our clients know that they're never going to pay us a single dollar above and beyond our flat transparent monthly cost because we don't take commissions. We don't manage accounts and charge a fee based on that. Mm -hmm. We don't have a single product we can sell. So it's all very straightforward. And so I think we're working to kind of uproot that mentality and mm -hmm. really make things a little bit more out in the open and transparent. So some of our listeners, Eric, and as our listener, I want you to pay attention to this because, you know, sometimes when certain conversations are being had, people tune out, you know, well, that's not for me. I don't fit that mold. I don't fit that category. Financial planning is important for everybody. We're now finally, as a society, 
getting to educating our children about money while they're in school because a lot of parents don't do it at home because they're struggling at home to just to make ends meet and they don't expose their children to it so they can understand income and expenses money in money out and they're not able to save so they're trying to work through all of that to get to where they need to be but eric explain to us why everybody even if you feel you don't have money should be engaged in what we're talking about oh thank you for asking that because i'm so passionate about this people think that they shouldn't work with a financial advisor until they have money that couldn't be further from the truth mm -hmm. like you should work with a financial advisor to help you build wealth to help you gain mm -hmm. that money i mean just thinking kind of generation to generation right just after school you're getting your first job your first paycheck what do people normally want to do they want to spend that they finally have money that's the worst thing to do that's the time where you should be building those foundational habits around saving so a financial planner can help you look at hey great you're making 800 bucks a week let's mm -hmm. look at okay you can spend 700 of that we're going to save 100 of it right mm -hmm. we're going to save it up for this goal and this goal maybe they have benefits for the first time through their employer coach them on what medical plan should you choose you know what does that mean if you have a medical event how much will you be liable for mm -hmm. making sure they have savings to cover that helping them pick disability insurance through work and life insurance and just really making sure they're not misstepping on those first kind of key foundational decisions awesome use of a financial planner then a little later on in life like in your late 20s early 30s you have a family you're balancing all these weird goals you've got potentially a house that you're looking to maybe move into you've got retirement you're not trying to lose sight of you've got college education that you're trying to pay for your kids you maybe mm -hmm. have your own student loans to pay for that's a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with like investments and investable assets but that's still mm -hmm. a lot of planning that's things that it's so important to get advice on because you don't want to set up the wrong type of college savings account that's a decision that you don't want to regret 18 years down the line and all of a sudden your kid can't pay for one extra year of school that you otherwise maybe could have right mm -hmm. if you made better decisions mm -hmm. so there's a ton there's a ton to work through in kind of your late 20s early 30s mid 30s mm -hmm. and then you've got in your 40s maybe kids are going to college you're maybe supporting your own parents and figuring out hey can i take them in can they live with me can i give them 100 bucks a month 500 bucks a month to help them pay for their expenses is that part of the budget looking at maybe starting to think about when is your timeline for retirement like 10 years 15 years i could keep talking mm -hmm. i'm gonna stop because you get the idea like there's just no matter the age no matter your financial situation you are making financial decisions day in and day out that matter and they have a compounding effect over your lifetime i remember having fp i've talked to a couple people a few times before but you know having that conversation introducing somebody into that just for lack of a better way to put it it just it's foreign to them like why do i need or even i didn't realize that i should have but just that eye opening experience to say okay look and as an fp you recommend everything you okay insurance what does that look like what's your succession plan what do you plan we talk on this show about legacy that that's our thing you know what are you leaving for your children what is that inheritance you know as we talk about it and do it from a biblical principle the inheritance for your children 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 and so forth and so on we speak about that and this is a component of that and you need some help you need some guidance because see what will happen is and i don't know why i'm even saying this eric but what will happen is social media have you buying a new pair of jays when you need to be putting some money in the bank for your future towards retirement that you need to be investing into an IRA and or 401k matter of fact let's do it this way you need to be putting that money into a 401k but social media got you going about a new pair of J's so you ain't go far enough in the alphabet you stopped the J and didn't go to K so we got to work on that that's the thing that we need to do so you know we don't talked about and touched on and I think kind of put this thing here down for the people that are like okay well look I don't feel I make enough money for this but no, you need some guidance. You need some guidance financially. So budgeting is going to help you to save money, but saving money, putting money in the bank isn't investing in building the future. Oftentimes that we desire, we want, uh, you know, and I'm going to say this real briefly. We just had a major employer here that's been here for 40 some odd years announced a shutdown. Like 
Oh, we gone this day out. So what does that mean for all those people? And what if they didn't invest money? What if they didn't have a planner to help them? But now I'm going to take you on the other side to the other end of the spectrum. Because, see, you know how to hack them credit cards. And what I mean by that, ho, ho, before y'all, our listeners start running out <laughs> and doing the wrong thing. We ain't talking about that. We talking about how you can use credit cards, build reward points and leverage that. That's a great tool. I just started doing it. So if you don't mind, Eric, touch on that, how people can use credit card points, how they can leverage financially. Now, we ain't talking about going out and taking out credit you ain't got. So but I'm gonna let you clarify that for our listeners, Eric. But let's talk about that on the other end of the spectrum. And then let's come back in the middle for a couple of other final points. Yeah, I mean, I think the important thing with credit cards and managing that is, of course, don't try to chase travel points, rewards, if you can't pay your credit card off every month in mm -hmm. full, every time, period. Mm -hmm. Because the second you don't do that, all those potential rewards you would have gotten are offset by the cost that you're going to pay in interest. So that's to get in the door, you have to be really responsible. But assuming you are, then this is such a great way for people, as you're discovering, for people to subsidize their travel. There's a number of great credit cards out there that are going to allow you to build points quickly, usually two, three points per dollar on average mm -hmm. is about what you can get. You know, So if you spend $10,000 over the course of a year, that's 25, 30,000 dollars or 25 or 30,000 points you can get. And then those points, if you're smart about how you use them, you can get two, three, four cents per point in value. So if you had 25,000 points, like you could be getting, gosh, I do my math on that, but you know, enough to pay for probably three round trip airline tickets in a year, just off the kind of modest monthly spend. I would say it's not easy, but if you got a little kind of savviness about you and you can figure it out, like, yeah, there's absolutely free travel to be had. I just started with this, I'll say fairly recently, because I travel a lot of business travel and in that business travel, oftentimes I'm reimbursed. If not, if it's my business I'm on, then obviously we foot that bill. But if it's other business I'm traveling for, I may be reimbursed for expenses. So I have rewards with hotels. I have rewards with airlines. And I just got to the point, I'm like, wait a minute, why have I not been doing this? So, you know, accumulating points that can be used for upgrades on flights and things of that nature. I'm a big guy. I want to be comfortable as I can if, if I'm flying. I can't sit in tin can in the back and, and be comfortable. I'm just kind of squozed up in there. So being able to use our rewards for that, and what I get the opportunity to do is that when I'm reimbursed for the expense of, you know, a trip, pay that off. Yeah. Let me. Okay, that's me, the dream. That's the dream off. right there. Yeah. 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 So that's a life hack there for people on the other end of the spectrum. Now, for our listeners, a full disclaimer, I'm not suggesting telling you don't go out and get credit cards if you are not ready. If you're not financially ready to have credit cards, talk to Eric first before you go get any talk to your planner. So Eric, let me kind of bring you around on this one because oftentimes we're talking with the FP. We're thinking about if we're starting early, the old adage of you start with the end in mind. So, you know, oftentimes the conversation goes to end of life, retirement, end of life. Tell me, what does that look like? Like when you're consulting with someone potentially, what does that look like? What approach do you use to kind of get them to look at not just, okay, today, but this is what we want to lead up to so that when you get to retirement, you'll be able to live this way. And at this point in time, this is what will happen or should happen with your assets. Do you want something more? I mean, more meaningful moments, opportunities, deeper relationships, and memorable experiences. Do you want to make a difference? If you said yes to any of that, a career in real estate could be the opportunity you're looking for. Guiding people through one of the most important decisions they ever make, the purchase or sale of their home, could be both rewarding and lucrative for you. Exit Realty's revolutionary compensation model 
training, and technology provide you with the tools and resources you need to start and build your successful real estate career. Call Exit Realty Low Country Group today at 843-619-3005. That is 843-619-3005. Or visit join.exitlowcountry.com and make your exit today. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously going to depend a bit on the age. What give me an age frame you're thinking about? Like, are, are we talking well, to somebody? I tell you what, let's start where I am. Let's say forty five to fifty. Perfect, forty five to fifty. So, you know, at this point, you probably have a lifestyle that you're used to, right? It sounds like you've got a certain level of travel. You've got certain things, maybe memberships at different places. The first thing we would want to talk about is like, as you see yourself transitioning to retirement or we like to use the term becoming financially independent, not required to work. What sort of lifestyle do you want to maintain? Is it the current one? Does that feel right? Or do you see yourself maybe adding hobbies, adding additional travel, maybe visiting kids in different parts of the country, like really visualizing that and, and talking through that. So that's the start of the conversation. And then we back into, okay, if that's what the lifestyle is going to be, how much more or less is that going to cost? And so we, you know, we look at, okay, maybe you're spending $4,000 a month right now. Well, we know that in retirement, because of these different awesome things you want to do, it's going to be closer to like 5,000. So, okay, if you need $5,000 a month, right, and, and that's going to sustain this lifestyle, you need to save X amount by the time you're financially independent. And right now you have this, and we want to get you to here. So in order to do that, you just have to save 300 bucks a month and your goal. We'll adjust or add or, or reduce as need be, but that's the basic in its most easy digestible form. That is the conversation. I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, yeah, I mean, everybody has their own lifestyle, right? And we don't want to force them to do something, but we want them to think about how is that lifestyle going to shift as they age? There was an answer to my question. What I heard in that, people don't think about this. Everybody want to do everything now. And what I mean by that, Eric, and if our listeners, everybody wants to do everything now. They want to travel now. They want to do everything now and to an excess at times. And your retirement life looks differently sometimes because you didn't do things differently now. When you retire, when you ain't got to worry about going back to work the next day, you can take a trip around the world or you can now people are, I mean, they life hacking, man. They taking these old cruise ships and rebuild them and putting and sailing people around the world for a year. You know, imagine doing that or being able to do that because you didn't take every vacation that you could have taken. Now you stack that or what have you, or you want to live a different life in retirement. Cause sometimes people want to do that by the time they reach retirement. Typically they have gotten all the children out of the house. Um, they've gotten a massive amount or if they had massive amounts of debt, they've gotten a lot of that stuff either lowered or taken care of you know, trustfully they've worked to save, that's the time that you want to be able to live differently. I have a client that in their retirement, they take a cruise or two, if not more a year, they take a trip, they flip houses, older couple, um, Pastor Evans, Elder Evans. I talk about them constantly here on the show. They are loyal listeners to us and they flip houses. But when they finish a house, they take a trip. That's the reward for that's the world. awesome. Yeah. That's I love the, it. That's her thing. When they finish a the house. Okay. Now celebration. We're going to take a trip. Yeah. And it is amazing to me. That's what they do it for. Like, okay, well, look, the house is going to take pay for the vacation. So I'll make this investment, pay for the vacation. I'm going to go do it. Like yeah. a no-brainer, dude. Yeah. Like a no-brainer. You know, I think the thing I'll share that would really maybe help some listeners think about why they should save for the future, why they should plan for the future is because everybody, you think, right? If I ask you, Corin, when are you going to retire? You're going to give me an age right? 62, 65, whatever, 58. The reality is it's probably not going to be that age. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, it won't be your decision. You know, you mentioned that factory near the business, the local business. Think all those people plan to retire right now? No. How many of them are now forced to retire? And are they ready? Right? Did they save? You could have a health issue, right? Mm -hmm. That you can, just can't work because of it. I don't have the exact stat in front of me, but I've heard that over 50% of people 
don't retire at the age they planned because they were forced to retire because of those things, job mm. change, health thing, maybe helping out family, like parents are sick, mm. husband, wife are sick, kids are sick, right? It's always something unexpected. It's you have to plan for the unexpected. Interesting. That's interesting. Cause I actually had that conversation with somebody who was telling me that they had a friend or somebody who worked over there and they weren't ready to plan to retire yet. They found out because the news article or someone called them just kind of in passing or whatever and just said it in conversation. Oh, I saw that you guys are closing. They was like, wait a minute, what? Because they hadn't yeah. been notified the employees yet. The announcement got out before the employees yeah. knew. Right. And they weren't planning to retire for another year or two. So like you said, now they're being forced. And you know the option is to try to go find another job somewhere. But if you've been seasoned that long, and I think they had been there at the plant for probably about 30 years, they were up on retirement. Most companies aren't going to make that investment into someone, you know, because they don't see the longevity in it. So what do you do? So guys, we have to do differently. Eric, we talk about that constantly on our show, you know, trying to expose people to different thought processes and all those things, because we want them to pursue greater opportunities, not just the status quo. Now, Eric, look, I'm having a real good time with you, man. We've been going and having this conversation, but I want to ask you a couple of things. So one, first of all, give your contact information to our listeners. How can people reach you? Yeah, so they can find us online at Abundo, A-B-U-N-D-O, Abundo Wealth. We've got advisors all across the country. We work with clients virtually. They can find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Abundo Wealth. All right. Awesome. Awesome. The next thing I'm going to ask you, and as we wrap up the show, I want to ask you, I call it my might drop question. What thing, whether it be one or whether it's a combination of things, could you share with someone that if someone had told you would have made all the difference to you a long time ago? Mm. That's a deep one, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I haven't been asked that one before. I will give a piece of advice that I was told okay. when I was young mm -hmm. that I think applies. I made a mistake in my very first job in high school and I was of course devastated. And my boss told me at the time, he said, Eric, it's okay because no one will ever know or care that this happened. And of course I was relieved by that, but then I reflected on it for years and I thought all of us live so much in our heads and we're all our hardest critic. And we all think that everybody else is judging us the same way. But in reality, no one is really going to care or even know if something happens. So just be easier on yourself. Be kinder to yourself. Be kinder to others. That would be my message. Interesting. I like that, my man. I love that. I love that. So Eric, thank you so much for being on the show with us. Thank you for, as I tell our listeners all the time, how grateful I am for our guests that come and leave their wisdom with us. Let me phrase that because you got to take, you got more, you got plenty to spread around, but leave a portion of their wisdom with us to help us to be better, to educate us, to inspire us, to encourage us. So I am going to say this to you yet again. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being part of Exit Strategies Radio Show family and for spending some time with us today. For our listeners, for our listeners, guys, this has been an awesome show. There is a lot of nuggets in here and I want you guys to go back. I want you to look at the episode online, exitstrategiesradioshow.com. Guys, I want you to share it. I want you to encourage others. I want you to go to abundo.com and I want you, is it it's abundo.com? Abundowealth.com, but Abundo you know, Wealth. they, they can find us. Yeah. Abundowealth.com, guys. And I want you to go there and I want you to plug in. You guys have the outlet. You guys have the plug. You have the ability to connect it to the plug to the outlet and make it happen. So once again, final time, again, thank you all. Thank you, our listeners, for tuning in. Y'all know how I feel. Y'all know what I say. I'm going to put the two of them together and I'm going to say it to you this way which is I love you, I love you, I love you. And we're gonna see you guys out there in those streets.